It's time for laughs with Mr. Thomas. It's me again. Back for some more trig equations. This time we are on lesson number six. Some more trig equations, but this time solving them when you have square terms and we have to factorise as well. Oh yeah. So let's start off with example number five. Examples one to four were on the previous lesson. So solve four cos squared x minus five equals negative two. First thing you know you want to do is you want to get it in the form of cos x equals or sine x equals. So we'd have to get rid of the times before and the negative 5. So add 5 to both sides, we'd have 4 cos squared x equals 3. Divide by 4 and we have cos squared x equals uh, 3 quarters. And cos squared x, what does that mean? Chelsea! Chelsea, you're a genius. It means a cos x times cos x. So it means cos x all squared. To get rid of the squared, you square root both sides, remove the squared over and then square root it. But either way, you'd have the square root of 3 quarters. Now if I asked you the square root of 49, you'd probably tell me it was 7, but some of you may also say it's negative 7. And we have to think about both the positive and the negative when you are taking the square root. Can you simplify that anyway? Well yes, the square root of 3 is just, well that's root 3, you can't simplify that. But square root of 4 is 2. And if you get cos x equals root 3 over 2, it should be screaming out at you that that is one of your exact values. Which one would that be then? So root 3 over 2 cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's going to be 30 degrees. And 30 degrees in radians is pi over 6. So inverse cos of root 3 over 2, and you get pi over 6. After that, you would be thinking about the quadrants, but... Because it's both the positive and the negative, positive would be A and C, negative would be S and T, so you're using all four quadrants here, which means you're going to have four possible answers. So going around, working your way through cast, X would equal, you'd have your first answer with pi over 6, your second quadrant, you'd have pi minus pi over 6, third quadrant is pi plus pi over 6, and the fourth quadrant, you've got 2 pi minus pi over 6. Simplifying that then, well, pi over 6 stays as pi over 6. If you have pi minus pi over 6, try to put this into sixths. So if you imagine that as sixths, multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by 6, you'd end up with 6 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. Do the same with this pi, you'd have 6 pi over 6, add 1 pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 6. And for 2 pi, well how do you make 2? 2 is what divided by 6? Well it's 12 divided by 6, so write that as 12 pi over 6. Take away 1 pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. And that would be your four possible answers. Again, we have four answers because it could be the positive or the negative so that's how you would solve a trig equation when you've got cos squared or sine squared and so on. Another example, number six. Solve four sine squared x plus 11 sine x plus six equals zero to two decimal places for x between zero and two pi. So this time we're asked for decimal places, but it's in radians, so that's something that's new. Also, we've got um, sine squared and then sine and then a number. That's going to be difficult to rearrange into just sine x equals. So how would you go about doing it? Well, some of you might be thinking, well, it looks kind of like a quadratic with an x squared term, then an x term, and then just a number. And you're perfectly right. If you imagine it as 4x squared plus 11x plus 6 equals 0, think about what you would do with that in order to solve it. So we're replacing sine x just with x. So we've got 4x squared, 11x plus 6 equals 0. And to solve that, Andrew, what would you do? Factorise. You got it. Well done. So think factorising. If you factorise that, then you'd end up with 4x plus 3 bracket x plus 2 equals 0. And from there, where would you go? Well, if you think about the question, the question isn't 4x squared, it's 4 sine squared x. So we want to now replace x back with sine x. So you can rewrite it as 4 sine x plus 3 bracket sine x plus 2. Really what you would do is you would go off to the side and you would work this out. So really work that out at the side, factorise it and then go back to your answer and see what you would get. 
Solving this then, what would you do? Well, I'm going to start with this bracket on the right. You know that you would set them both equal to zero. So sine x plus two equals zero. Subtract two, you'd have sine x is negative two. What would you get for that then? No solution, perfectly right, well done. Why would you have no solution? Well, if you imagine your sine graph, your sine graph has a maximum of one, so the largest value it can be is one, and the smallest value is negative one. So sine x at negative two, if you kept drawing your y-axis down here to negative two, well, there's no solutions, okay? It doesn't work, the smallest value is negative one. So we don't need that. You just write no solution. For this bracket here, four sine x add three, set that equal to zero, solve that just the way you have been doing for years. So subtract three from both sides, divide both sides by four, and we'd end up with negative three quarters. Again, you want to do inverse sine, get the size of the acute angle, but don't put in the negative, okay? Ignore the negative. When you're doing this on the calculator, you'll probably put in the three quarters. You'll do shift sine, inverse sine of the three quarters, and it'll give you an answer in degrees. What you could always do is you can put the calculator in radians. So there is a setting in the calculator to use radians. Or what you could do is you know to change from degrees to radians, you divide uh, by 180 and you times by pi. Or times by pi divide by 180. If you do that, you should get 0 0.848. Remember, do it to a few decimal places. It's not your final answer. So keep a few decimal places there. After that then, what would you do next? Well, after that, you're then thinking about cast. So think about the quadrants you would use. It's sine, it's a negative. Where is sine a negative? Well, that's where sine's positive. That's where sine's positive. So you're using the, se the third and the fourth quadrant. So we've really got pi plus 0 0.848 and we've got 2 pi minus 0 0.848. Remember pi is just the pi button on the calculator. It's 3.14159265353 blah 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 blah. If you do that you would end up with x equals 3.99 to a couple of decimal places and 5.44 to a couple of decimal places. Again, just make sure your answer is in radians. There's no degrees sign here. Okay, we're not writing in degrees. It is radians. If there's no degrees symbol, it is in radians. And it's got to be between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi, well, if you double 3.14, you get 6.28. And both those answers are between 0 and 6 point whatever. So we get both answers. Next one. Example 7. We want to solve 2 cos squared x equals 5 minus 7 sine x. So how would we go about doing that one? Well, what you probably want to think is with this, you've got a cos squared and you've got a sine. So this one is going to be very, very difficult to arrange into the form of cos x equals or sine x equals. So what you want to do is you want to try and remember what you did last year. If you remember you had your trig identities, and your trig identities, one of them was sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And given that, you could then rearrange it to say that sine squared x would then equal 1 minus cos squared x, and cos squared x would equal 1 minus sine squared x. So this is previous knowledge that you need to try and remember. Okay. But the whole point in that is if you look down here, you've got cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. So what you can do is in here replace cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. And if you do that, then it means on the left hand side it will be written in the terms of sine. And on the right hand side as well, it will be written in terms of sine. So you want to start off doing that. So. That's the question. 2 cos squared x equals 5 minus 7 sine x. Replace cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. And when you do that, when you sub it in, just make sure you put brackets around it, and then you can multiply the brackets out. So 2 minus 2 sine squared x equals 5 minus 7 sine x. Once you do that, where would you go from there? Well, after that, you really want to arrange it because you've got a sine squared, you've got a sine and you've got numbers, arrange it into the form of x squared, x and then number, just like your quadratic in the last example. So to do that, I'd probably make the squared term a positive, so I'd move the two 
sine squared x to the other side. I'd keep this on this side and move the 2 over and subtract it. If you do that and then rearrange it, you should end up with 2 sine squared x minus 7 sine x plus 3 equals 0. Once again, you've got sine squared, you've got sine, and you've got a number, so you can think about factorising. So go off to the side and think, swap sine x with uh, just x. So 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Factorise that. We'd end up with 2x minus 1, bracket x minus 3. And again, we're not working with x, we're working with sine x. So replace x back with sine x. If you do that, that is what you would end up with. Going over the page then, you've got the two brackets there, you want to set them equal to zero, starting with the right again, because that's going to be quite quick. But if you've got sine x minus three equals zero, add three to both sides, you've got sine x equals three. And what would you have for that? No solution, woo! No solution, because once again, your maximum and your minimum would be one and negative one for your sine graph. Up at three, it does not exist. No solution. Let's get rid of that. Bye. With this one here, two sine x minus one. That's set that equal to zero. Add one to both sides. Oops, don't know why I've got it twice. Add one to both sides. Divide by two. So sine x would equal one half. After that, you want to do inverse sine. Work out the size of the acute angle. So sine to the negative one of a half would equal 30 degrees. Again, think about your exact values. This could easily be a non-calculator question. And from there, what quadrants would you use? Well, look in here, sine is a positive, so sine is a positive in quadrant one and two. Meaning then, you'll have 30 degrees, or 180 minus 30 degrees. Given your two values, we'd have 30 or 150 degrees. And that would be your final answer. Again, just check, it's in degrees. Yep, we're asked for it in degrees. It's got to be between zero and 360. Both these answers are between zero and 360. So that was examples five, six, and seven, including ones where you had to factorize and ones with a squared term, We had cos squared. Try the questions, practice them, make sure you're okay before we move on. Good luck, have fun.